Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope that everyone had a great Christmas. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got to spend it with someone you cared about and loved and could just share some love and joy with them this past holiday. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as me and my family did. We had a great Christmas, and I just pray that you did as well. Today, I want to share with you guys a message about coming through it is the title of this message and it's based and kind of conceived off of a message I actually preached four years ago and as I read a snippet from this sermon I want you to understand it's going to be a little out of context because I took a small piece out of this past sermon but I think it's important and relevant to today and so after we're done reading it I'll bring it into context and kind of explain it a little deeper and it goes like this History is a lot of fun for me because you learn so much about why things are. So many people today just don't understand why things are happening or why the world is so messed up. Or here is something we can probably all relate to. The fact that people in the United States complain and moan and groan, but then they wonder why the political process is the way it is. During the election, it was all people could talk about. And now people are still wondering about it and how did we get here and is it for better or for worse? This was a chaotic election with a lot of negativity and a lot of things said that frankly people are saying have changed the electoral process for all times. But all of that is understandable though if we study history. Our world becomes much more open and understandable to us even though we may not like it even more once we study our own history and the history of others. Now that snippet was taken from a sermon I preached January 2017 and it comes right after President Trump was elected as president. And during that time, for those of you who remember that time, it was just, it was a unique experience in the voting, it was a unique, unique experience with the advertisements that were out. There was just so much negativity. There was so much slandering. There was so much. And they said that no political process would ever be the same again because of that election. And everyone just thought, you know, we had sanctuary cities and safety zones. And it was just no one knew. And it, it surprised everyone of how it became the way it was and the way that it happened just shocked the world but it didn't really shock me I mean we are I'm always surprised of who's elected and who's not and you know we don't know we can't guarantee who gets elected even though we might think that they have a strong ability or position we just don't know but the fact of the matter is is people wondered why how did we get here? And this was back in 2017. How did we get here? And is it better or worse? And frankly, you know, we've said then time will tell. Frankly, we're four years past that mark. And I think time has told us a little bit about that vote in the electoral process we went through. And see... But now we're just coming out of another one. We're not completely out of it yet. But people are still again asking why and how is it or is it for better or for worse. And people wonder why did we get to this point? How did we get here? Well, all you have to do is look four years ago at the last electoral process to see something similar happen. And the truth is, is if you go back and start looking at every electoral process, you kind of see some patterns and some functions and ways things happen. It's beneficial for us to study that, to know. It helped guide and inform us on kind of how we got to the places we are today. But it's not just that. It's not just studying electoral history and the presidential history. As Americans, we need to study American history, in my opinion, because I think history is one of the most important subjects that we can learn. I think it's more important than math and science, although those are really great things, and I'm, 
I enjoy those as well. And they have important, you know, thing. Uh, they are really important to some of our fields and are necessary. But history, I think, is a primary subject that we should be taught most and in more depth. Because there's a phrase that I'm sure you guys have heard. It's those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. And the simple fact of the matter is, is people who don't study or care about history don't understand the significance and weight of that statement. Because they don't care or remember all the countries that have followed in the same processes of rising and falling that have happened before us. America was founded on the premise of men who knew their history. They were coming out of tyrannical governments, feudalism, monarchies. They were coming out of countries where they were told how they could dress, where they could eat, where they could sleep, how they could worship, who they could worship. And they knew that they didn't want that. They had studied history of their countries and they knew they didn't want that anymore. They wanted a free country. When the pilgrims came over, they wanted to have freedom from that society and those issues. And that was the reason for coming to America is to free themselves from that government. Governments they didn't want to be a part of. And then when we created this country, when our forefathers sat down and wrote the Declaration and the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, they knew what happened in the past and they set up something they thought would prevent it from happening in the future. And paramount to them was the rights and privileges of the individual for their own property and their own power. Protecting and preserving the individual's rights and properties above all else was paramount to them. So that we could have freedom to decide what we wanted to do and how we wanted to live. And that's great. And that's great to learn. And it was an amazing thing that they set up to do. But when you study that history and then you study the history that goes from there to our current time and place, you can see how things have shifted and changed over the years to get us to the point we are. But it's not just American history I think we should study. There's so many other histories that we can learn lessons from to help explain to us of why things are the way they are if we only look to it. The French Revolution, I think, is a very cautionary tale of what to protect against. They revolted against feudalism and their monarchy because of a lot of different issues and good reasons, mind you, but then the people who led the revolution actually got killed by their own guillotines for not being radical enough, ultimately leading to the country dissolving and into corruption and dis despair, leading to Napoleon taking over by force. There's a lot of things that we need to know about what happened with the French Revolution to try to make sure they don't repeat here in America. England's change from a monarchy to a parliamentary-led country is really important. A lot of social and economic and ideological changes happen there that are important and good for us to know to kind of see what changed and how it motivated them to, I would say, improve their country instead of declining like France did. Then there's Germany, who became a great nation and then fell during World War I and then got rebuilt in the Nazism and then only to fall again, but to, in this current day of age, to rebuild themselves again. I think there's some clues of uh, kind of what happened socially there that led them to those points of greatness and also to the points of rel rather being a thorn in the side of the world. There's Russia's change from czars to communism back out of communism and there are a lot of things that happen in that country that are telltale signs that we could learn from 
to help grow and improve our country. There's China's descent into communism. There's Spain, Italy, Greece, Vietnam, South Africa, and India who have all changed governmental systems, ideologies in some cases that are huge. That if we studied, we could learn how and why the change came about, what were the big players, what were the big issues that happened, what things in society told the tale of what the bad things were and how we can maybe spot those in our own society to try to fix, try to change, try to correct. But then you could also go to, you know, further in time to ancient times and study Rome and its rise and fall. And then you have Egypt, the world power multiple times over, but also failed and became a nothing state for multiple times. You have Assyria, Babylon, and Persia that all rose and fell in great prominence in the world. And how and why those countries rose and fell. But then there's also other history that we can learn from and that's the Bible and Israel's changes as well Israel goes through so much change throughout the Bible and yet we oftentimes kind of ignore what's going on culturally I think in the scriptures that causes them to rise to a great nation that conquers everyone around them to a nation that you know a pathetic force can just wipe out the whole country. I mean, they just go to great heights and great lows. And it's not just a snap of the finger of God saying, oh, I don't like you this day. Oh, I like you this day. There's so much going on in the scripture behind the scenes of telling about how the people's minds and moods and ideologies and faiths are changing that take them to the highs, but yet take them to the lows. Right now, in my devotional study, I'm going over the book of Nehemiah, and it shows how Israel is coming out of a dark age, you could say, of turning away and not being faithful to God. And yet, one man, Nehemiah, is going to help change and motivate and elevate Israel back to the place it needs to be. And that's a, his, a lesson we can learn throughout all history. Sometimes, it's not just one man, but one man can affect great change. One man can alter a country's history and course and direction. Not that they're the only ones involved, but sometimes there's, there is one primary person that kind of catalyzes it or is known as the catalyst, even though there are many people involved. Nehemiah is not the only one in Israel and God's people being faithful to him. But Nehemiah is remembered because of his works. And throughout history, there is great men and women who have changed the courses of countries and events. And yet, sadly, history is something that most kids in today's age don't care about. In fact, my own daughter does not like history. And I'm not saying that's a negative towards her because she doesn't like history it's just the simple fact that some people don't like it, and then there's weirdos like me that do like it. I enjoy watching documentaries. I enjoy watching History Channel. I enjoy reading and learning about historical events. And there are people out there that just don't care about it. And that's something I constantly tell my daughter, though, is that it doesn't matter if you don't like it. You need to force yourself to go deeper in it. Because the simple fact is, you need to know history to learn from it. And in fact, that's where we're going to go in today in our scripture in Romans 8.22. It says something to that effect. And it says this in Romans 8.22. For we know that the whole creation groans and suggests the pains of childbirth together until now. Now, why is that important? It's because multiple times throughout Scripture, it talks and tells about how the world is broken. Why is the world broken? What effects does that brokenness have on the world? Well, when you read the Scripture, you know why and how. 
when sin came into the world, when Adam brought sin into the world, the world broke. We broke as people, the world broke as a creation, and sin and death entered into it, corrupting it until Jesus comes again. At what case, in which case he's going to correct it and remake it anew. And I can't wait for that day. But the thing about that chapter, the whole earth groans as a suggesting of child pains, bearing pains. Well, that doesn't mean anything if you don't study and read about it. You don't understand the consequences that has on the world even today. But when you read Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, it says this. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement of Scripture, we might have hope. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another, according to Christ Jesus, so that with one purpose and with one voice you may glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to know our past to have hope for a better tomorrow. And that's the key that I want you guys to know in this message. We have to know our past to have hope for a better tomorrow. Because of what it just said in that scripture, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. So that through perseverance and encouragement of scripture, we might have hope. A couple months ago, I made both my kids, my daughter's in the middle, my son's in elementary school, watch a Schoolhouse Rocks video. And if you know what Schoolhouse Rocks videos are, uh, your positive note, you have a leg up on the rest of the world because they're pretty neat. They're kind of cheesy, but neat. And anyways, in this one video is all about how a bill goes from being a bill, a piece of paper with an idea for a law, and goes through the governmental processes to become a law. And my son, about a month and a half ago, came up to me and why we were just randomly and suggested to me that we write a bill. And at that time when he started this conversation, I was like, why do you want me to write a bill? And he's like, well, then it can go up the steps and it can be voted on by the people and it can become law and happen. And then it clicked inside of my head of what he was talking about. And he was remembering this video of Schoolhouse Rocks of a, a bill on Capitol Hill. And he remembered how the system worked. Because whenever I talk with kids about American civics and how our government works, they don't know. They just don't know is the simplest answer I can give. I know there are probably people out there teaching it or trying to teach it, but in general, students today don't know what it is and what it's about. But my son remembered this one video, and then even though what he wanted to write into a law was not an appropriate law, it's not something we should have pursued, I was thankful that he remembered that one thing, though, of how it works. And not only that, he was able to use it in a way to apply to his life to try to make a change for something he wanted in a correct fashion of using our political processes. And again, what he wanted wasn't a, I would say, a legitimate law. But the fact is, is he learned. And it's only from watching an old show that is probably older than I am that he learned that, and he remained, re, retained that, and he remembered it, and was able to use it. And what does that mean? He was able to remember that song, and that show, and apply it to something that he saw going on and wanted to change today. And that's the whole point of studying history is learning how to use it today for our benefit. When we read scripture, it's not just to remember or read something that happened a long time ago. It's to use it 
to help our lives today so that we can become better, so that we can have the hope for a better tomorrow by knowing our past. In James 1 verse 12, it says this, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. God promises throughout the Bible how he's going to be there for us, bless us, take care of us, if we are faithful to him. Blessed is the man who perseveres in a trial. How do we know how to persevere under trial? How do we know how to stay faithful? Well, we know from studying those who came before us. We have the privilege of studying thousands of years of people following God in both their failures and successes with the Bible and throughout other recorded history. We can see how God and Christianity and the following of him has influenced nations and yet at the same time, at times has gone to the sidelines and what has happened to those nations. We have seen it used and abused. Why? Because people didn't study the past. And when they did study the past, it was for the wrong reasons. It was to gain power. It was to gain might. In fact, I've looked at it before where, you know, with the Ark of the Covenant, they wanted the Ark of the Covenant there at certain battles, not because they wanted God, but because they wanted the power of God. Because of what it had done in the past. They didn't study the past to learn from it, to grow. They just sought power and truth in it. And then, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-7, through seven, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again, to live to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith and for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which perishes through the testing of fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whenever I talk to someone about salvation, I go through the same process, whether it's a kid or an adult. And part of that process is going over Scripture. Examining Scripture, reading Scripture. Why? Because there's no way we can understand who Jesus is, who God is, how it all works together without studying Scripture. But the fact is, is we can't understand what Jesus gives to us in salvation, which is freedom. Freedom from our sins, freedom from our bondage and slavery, freedom from ourselves, freedom to spend eternity with Him forever. But there's no way to understand the significance of that unless we study our own past. It's We have to study the sin in our past to understand that freedom is valuable. Because it's worthless unless you understand your sin and your past and what it has caused you and cost you. And that requires us to look into our past and study it. But we just don't have that that we can look at. We can look at so many other people's past and study what sin has cost them. What sin has done to people, places, countries. If only we study it. But we need to study it to know how important it is. In fact, Mike's theme for this next year that he's going to be leading us in is the theme of freedom. And all that it entails. But 
But right now, and every day, if we're not in Christ, and you're looking for that missing piece, you're looking for that freedom, that weight to be lifted, that helper to come along you and bear your burden, that person to set you free. And that's Jesus Christ who came and died on the cross to forgive us of our sins, to give us that freedom. But unless we know who he is, unless we know what he's freeing us from, it really doesn't hold a lot of weight. Just like the phrase, those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. Because unless we study history, it's going to be useless to us. We have to know our past to have hope for a better tomorrow. And the thing is, is just like it says in Romans 15, things that were written down before are there to help us become better. So that we can live better lives. And you know, 2020 is a year that most people want to forget. And my point is no yes 2020 was a bad year not just for us but for almost everyone in the world 2020 is a year most people are going to want to forget but the thing is is we shouldn't forget it just like we shouldn't forget any other year of our lives we should remember it and use it to learn about our past and to gain insight into things that happen so that in the future we can do things better. Culturally, country-wise, politically, but also individually to ourselves. But it's without that study that we can't move forward truly because we're going to make the same mistakes over and over again. And you right now might be wondering just what does that mean to me? Well, if you're not a follower of Christ and you can look back throughout your life and you see all this hardship and pain and suffering and doubt and regret, Jesus can give you freedom from that. Jesus can free you from that. And maybe you've already been saved and you're looking throughout your life. There might be things in it that you might need to reflect upon and say, maybe it's time I deal with this. Maybe it's time I address this. Maybe it's time I change this. Maybe it's the time I get out more and be more proactive. We have to know our past to have hope for a better tomorrow. And my challenge to you guys is, to reflect upon your past where this is the time where people make new year's resolutions and i just i challenge you to reflect upon your past people do it every year when they make new year's resolutions they see what they don't like about them in the past and they want to change it i'm asking you to take that further look at your whole past look at your spiritual past and now let's see how it needs to be changed or modified for the future so that we can have a better hope for tomorrow where the love of Jesus Christ is shared with more people and is more freely and openly and truthfully realized in us so we can impact the world if you would pray with me Father God thank you so much for today and I just thank you for this opportunity to share this message and Lord I just pray that everyone as we go into this new year time that we will have a great time a safe time Lord and that you will just help reveal to us the things that will help us to learn from and to grow from and send your spirit an extra force to encourage and guide us so that we that are dense like me will more easily hear it and to feel where we need to go and what we need to learn and do. In your name, amen. I love you, church family, and I pray that you have a wonderful week and a happy new year's. Thank you for joining us online today. We hope that you'll continue in your time of worship to God by taking communion as a family. Let's do this in remembrance of Jesus. We'd like to encourage you to take a few moments to worship through giving. 
You can bring a check or cash to the office. You can give online at fccclearwater.org, click give, or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. We look forward to seeing you next week, church family. Love y'all.